Before the start of the video, I want to clarify that I still like and play Overwatch. The followings are just my opinions on this subject, based on facts given to me. I am entitled to my opinion as much as you are to yours, so if you have something to say down there, go ahead. But try to bring something into the discussion, not mindless ranting. We're all civilized people here. It all started July 12th, with the release of Ana as the first tier introduced in the game after its release. Not only she brought a whole new chunk of lore, but she introduced a new way to play healer while shutting down enemy heals. It was already a decent kit when first released, but having 6 clips on a rifle and a fire rate of minus 20% compared to the one that we have right now, paired to her very low mobility, made the character feel too slow and a little bit weaker overall. So we added 4 extra shots in her clip, and the faster fire rate, and a small buff to her biotic grenade, it sharped out to be a strong character, but maybe considered too strong. For the longest time, because of Ana we had two major metas for season 2 and 3. The infamous Beyblade meta with Ana and Reaper, giving him a huge speed boost during his ult thanks to the way the nano boost used to work, and the triple tank meta, consisting of Ana and another healer having to keep alive 3 tanks, usually Reinhardt, Rodog and D.Va, and a self-healer damage dealer like Soldier. Eventually, the Overwatch team had to bring down the old lady from her podium, decreasing her rifle damage, the tiny biotic grenade affected the enemies, and the healing boost to her allies, bringing the character to not being able to assist multiple targets as fast as she could before, demolishing the triple tank meta and shifting the playstyle of many players to something else. She's still a very viable pick, obviously, but many rather pick a character that takes a little less skill that usually gives the same results, and manages to maintain a pretty big survivability thanks to her mobility. At least for now, unless something changes in the future. Anyway, 3 months after the release of Ana and a long tedious ARG, we got our 23rd hero, Sombra. Her concept was clearly intended as a disruptor for the enemy team, by shutting down enemies' defenses, abilities, ultimates, and health packs. But even during PTR testing, she never felt too strong. Her stealth ability was too loud, her cooldowns were insanely long, and overall, even when she was used by expert players, she couldn't do an effective job. But it seemed that Blizzard had no plans on buffing her. With a simple reason in mind, they didn't want another Ana situation. They thought that by buffing her kit, she would be too powerful. It was up to the players to learn how to use her. The 14th November, she was released in the live servers. But after a classic first hype of 6v6 all Sombras, she quickly disappeared from raiders. Only to come back as the most feared things in competitive, a troll pick. Blizzard stood to their belief of making the players adapt to her playstyle, a goal which clearly wasn't met by the community, given her weaknesses being bigger than her strength. And like the cherry on top, she also suffered from major bugs for the longest time, especially on her translocator, with her hitbox lagging behind, or the animation playing of her throwing the device while not actually throwing it. Slowly, during the next 3 to 4 months, she received a decreased cooldown and affixed to her sound FX and VO distance, previously being way too loud for a stealth based character. But sadly, the damage was already done, and it took some time for the players to stop seeing her as an insta throw. This past experience seemed to be reflected into our third hero, Orisa. Supposedly an anchor tank, able to shut down enemy pushes and deal with heroes who can stop your momentum. Again, she never felt too hot, given her low mobility and survivability, only 400 HP, a 12 second cooldown for her barrier, all paired with her weapons not being too easy to use, since the projectile have some travel time rather than hitscan. Still, even with a longer incubation time in PTR, she came into the live server in not a very well state. She did receive the buff eventually, making her barrier much more effective thanks to a shorter cooldown, at the cost of her damage and clip size. Her mobility and health remain unchanged, making her one of the heroes with the lowest mobility in the game, a game where 15 out of 24 characters can travel all over the map without any issue or have abilities that can make them reach higher grounds or shortcuts. And soon to be 16 heroes with the arrival of Doomfist, claimed to be in the works since the Overwatch beta, is probably the first new hero in a long time that feels strong in its own right, capable of traveling long distances in seconds, creating deadly combos with his abilities and gaining 30 shields health per every hit with his abilities. Sounds overpowered on paper, but what brings him down is his incredibly huge hitbox, especially on his head. Not to mention, it requires good positioning and fast reflexes to land deadly punches. But of course, because the new hero seems to be finally effective in the right hands, it already received tons of posts declaring him too strong, which already led to a nerf to his rocket punch, 
by cutting down 20% of his travel time, which is about 9 meters total. And I have to be honest, I'm afraid Blizzard is going to nerf him even more with the time. In a period where dive comp seems to be dominant, having another hero which fits perfectly might push it for another season. Something that, from past experiences, it's not what the Overwatch teams likes to see. Especially with a lot of community members not enjoying the whole idea of metas. But again, especially on higher ranks, the meta is something impossible to avoid. If players find a strategy that works while other solutions are not as strong, they will stick to it. But you can't blame it all on the pro scene. It seems to me that the team itself doesn't like to shake up the game, probably to keep a larger audience of players invested, usually with something harmless and fairly easy to produce, like skins or emotes, even if somehow they still create a fuss. What I would really like to see is them trying to test things up in the PTR, just like Jeff Goodman said back in October, doing crazy stuff, finding new synergies between heroes that never work together, Basically, creating more combos between a whole cast of 25 characters. But sadly, 3 months after Jeff post, Jeff has this to say in the January developer update. One thing that I, I've noticed that there's some confusion in the community about is what is the exact purpose of the PTR. And I think a lot of players assume the PTR only exists so that players can give feedback on upcoming changes. And while this is a really important part of what the PTR does, it's not all of what the PTR is about. The most important thing for us when we patch Overwatch to all of the live service is that the game is stable and works correctly and there's as few bugs or crashes or glitches as possible in the game. So while checking in on how the players feel about new changes in an upcoming patch is also very important to us, it's not the primary thing that we're looking at. We're actually looking the most at the stability of the game and is it running well? Is it is it ready to go live to all of our players? This shatters any dream of the PTR being the place where the most fun gameplay changes could occur. The Overwatch team only purpose is to test their own changes already decided internally, which most of the times create more harm than good. I understand PTR never sees a whole lot of players to test things out, but many actually do tune in when something big happens, like a new hero, a new map or a rework for a character. Sadly, the team fails to keep the players engaged to stay and test out more things. Which I believe that are always given to the excuse that players want a reward to spend their time on PTR. I personally disagree with this statement, since if you care about the game, you will stick around long enough to try new things that the live servers just can't provide. Which leads to my next and final point. The changes provided feel too short, one-sided and appear after a long waiting time, and usually they concentrate on reworking a single hero on its own. And to be more specific, when I say one-sided, it means that any player feedback almost feels pointless. When Bastion had his rework, his ability to self-heal while taking damage, combined to his minus 35% damage resistance while in center mode, was tested and proven to be too strong, since he could outlive most of the ultimates from other heroes. Still, the changes got to live servers, and the first week of season 4 was invaded by Bastions, making the game incredibly less fun only to have the damage resistance of his reduced by 15%. And I know what you're thinking, but we both know the sad state of Rodal right now, but I'm sure a buff is on the way. Anyway, I'm sorry if this seems off topic, but I strongly believe that it's all tied up to their policy of balancing the game. I still have a strong hope that as soon as they noticed how the competitive scene is slowly falling apart, they will start taking more action in their hands. Let's just hope that those cry for help won't be covered by more requests for Hanzo legendaries. It was all